Would you turn your Bibles to the book of Ephesians in chapter 4? Ephesians in chapter 4. Holy Spirit, thank you for ministering to every heart in this room. Thank you for your light and illumination and great encouragement by your Holy Scriptures. In Jesus' name. <clears throat> Ephesians in chapter 4. <clears throat> Last week, the title of the message was At the Feet of the Word. And I encouraged strongly that we are aware and cognizant of the distractions, the things that take away from and pull us away from. Being attentive and attend, being attendant, attending to God's Word, being in God's Word, spending time in God's Word, in learning from Jesus. Jesus said, learn from me in Matthew 11. And there are things which serve to distract us from that or to pull us away from doing that or remaining there. To be alive to those and to be intentional in being in God's Word. To be intentional, purposeful in learning from Jesus by being in the Word and paying attention to the same. At Ephesians in chapter 4, verse 31 we looked at what Paul said when he said, Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. It does not mean that you do that. You put those things away with malice. It just means that malice is also included in the list going aforehand to say, You know what? Put these things away from you. As far as conduct, lifestyle, attitudes, how you live out, put these things away from you. And I encouraged and shared that we are not to rush through portions of this nature when we read and when we study God's Word, to learn to pause, to learn to ask questions, to reflect to consider, deeply consider God's Word, whatever the portion is. Here's an example of the inquiry to run when you're having that reflection or having that time of meditation in God's Word. Ask, for example, do you have bitterness somewhere within, lurking within, somewhere in your heart? Do you have bitterness? If yes, then there is the need to, in an intentional way, turn that to Jesus. Give Jesus room and allow him to minister his rest, to minister his healing in a personal way to your heart and to you as an individual. And the same goes for everything there listed in Ephesians 4.31, for example, in wrath, in anger, you have that? Do I have that? Okay. If it's yes, then Lord, I turn this to you. You say, oh, I don't know what it is. Well, Holy Spirit, would you open this up? What is, but, but, not to speed through. Because there's reason and there's cause why the apostle says that. Okay? With all malice, clamor, all of that. Give Jesus room. If for whatever re reason you're able to sense or see or know that, oh, this lurks somewhere within. And not just blaze over it or just keep going, doing life and not addressing the heart issues. It's important to allow Jesus, the living word, to minister heart healing in necessary areas of our lives. Okay? Here's not just the next step. 
in this, but something which aids greatly if you're going to put away all those things plus others that the apostle talks about in all his epistles. Things that ought not to be part of our lives, but which we find may lurk in areas. Something that helps tremendously, greatly in this, being able to put away these things, he goes on to amplify, touch on in verse 32. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32. In the next verse. I title the message for today. He's starting this off. Forgiven. Forgiven. And the colon, a closer look at forgiveness. Forgiven. A colon, then a closer look at forgiveness. Ephesians in chapter 4, verse 32. Paul writes, And be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. I love how this is expressed in Philip's translation of the Bible, which I will now share and read. Ephesians in chapter 4, verse 32. Let there be no more resentment, no more anger or temper, no more violent self-assertiveness, no more slander, no more malicious remarks. Be kind to each other. Be understanding. Be as ready to forgive others as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. God, for Christ's sake, in Christ, by Christ, through Christ, has forgiven you. Do you know that you are forgiven? Do you carry the awareness that as a child of God, that as a new creature, a new creation, that as a disciple of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, do you know that you are forgiven? The text conveys and puts forgiveness and the state of of being forgiven as the premise and the template for you, for me, for us to go ahead and do what? And forgive what? Others. Because you have been forgiven, you also likewise do what? Forgive. Be ready to forgive others. You get to forgive because you have been what? Forgiven. Can you forgive in the way prescribed within the Holy Writ that is in the Bible? Can you forgive in this way? Can you forgive in this manner? Someone who's wronged you, who's spoken ill or done wrong or offended you, hurt you, Can you forgive? Walking in forgiveness is the pathway to walking free. Free. Free from things which hold bound that cause on the internals the the ruptures that cause. There are certain things we see in the behavioral aspect, in the attitude aspect and behavioral aspects that come out. Understanding forgiveness is key in being able to walk free and devoid of some of those things which constitute baggage and that hinder, that stymie, that somehow obstruct your ministry as a child of the living God, your ministry as an ambassador of Christ 
in this world, your ministry as lights in the world. That's why it's not possible that I would just say, well, it's whatever, whatever. It's just me, and this is what I do, and this is how I say it. And no, 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 no. Character. As a new creation, being brought in conformity to the image of Christ who dwells within you. In walking worthy, Ephesians 4, 1, of the calling. The calling is not just to pastor and for pastor. 2 Corinthians 5, 17, 18, 19, 20. You can put that down. We know it. And studying it out. There's a ministry that you have as a new creation for being born again at all. For being a Christian, for being a believer, for being a disciple of Jesus. You have a ministry. As an ambassador of who? Ambassador of who? Of Jesus Christ. You can't shirk it. You can't shank it. You can't say, you know what? I wish I could just, it's not like a garb. I'm just going to take it off and then just I'm, I'm pitch it. No, you're in already. You're saved. You're blood bought and washed. You've been translated, translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. The kingdom of their son, the son of his love. There's been that transfer already. And so there are other ways you can look at that. You're a soldier, you're a warrior. There are many things, descriptives from God's word I can use to describe that and flesh that out. You're in it already. You can't take your nature out and say, you know what, this nature I'm just going to take and I'm going to just be. No, no, no. There's something you receive. There's something. There's someone who resides on the inside. We'll be able, as believers, to walk freely in the freedom that forgiveness brings. If we understand the forgiveness that we have received from God. The more we understand the forgiveness that we have received from God, the more we understand that as a believer, as a child of God, that you are forgiven. To that degree and to that extent, you will be able to walk in forgiveness to others and devoid again of some of the things that attach in our walk and in lifestyle in conversation, and in conduct. For today, guess what I'll pitch because I'm going to continue staying on this theme for a while because it touches on a great number of aspects as it concerns our lives and walking in victory in the world. The Lord has us in the world for a reason. The Lord has us in the world. Otherwise, the day you got saved, guess what? Glory! be out of here. But you're here for cause. You're here for purpose. Ephesians 2.10 purpose as his workmanship created in Christ Jesus onto good works. I, won't, I don't want to get ahead. <clears throat> so understanding f- forgiveness is key. Our lady's base and this foundation in this light as it concerns forgiven and a closer look at forgiveness. God did not just say concerning you as a believer. All of a sudden, concerning you as a believer based on faith, he didn't just say, you know what? I'm just going to forgive. You're, just, you're forgiven. It wasn't just, as it were, rhetoric. It wasn't just, oh, okay, a blanket saying, so to speak. Okay, forgiven. Something happened. One, something happened. Two, there is something that forgiveness is. There is something that when we talk about being forgiven, there is something that it is, there is something that is attached to which we ought to know and not only know, be apprised of, and not only be apprised of, be rooted and grounded in. And it has an effect for our lives in how we walk, how we live.
And we will do a fair bit of reading. So it won't be, oh, Pastor Shem is just saying all these things today and for the rest, however long this goes, we'll be intentional in looking into our Bibles and reading. Amen? Or whatever device you have. Praise God. Turn your Bibles to Colossians in chapter 2. Colossians in chapter 2. Verse 13 is the port of call. And you being dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he has made alive together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. You being dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he has made alive together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. We have something very similar akin to this selfsame portion in the book of Ephesians where we were. Ephesians, if you flip a few pages back, Ephesians and chapter 2. Ephesians 2. Two verses, verses 4 and 5. From verse 1, it talks about you. He has quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. All the way down to verse 4. But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us. God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us. Even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. We're dead in trespasses and sins. He made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. And that's in parentheses in your Bibles. And a couple of verses Later, it explains that because what I'm trying to say is this. In salvation, in the process, in salvation and in the process of what happened, what transpired with you the moment you believed, forgiveness and being forgiven is an integral and essential part of you coming into faith, of you being, becoming, being a member of the household of God, a member of the kingdom of God, a member of the family of God, you were forgiven. Forgiveness was appropriated, taken to self when you believed in Jesus as Lord and Savior and Master and King over your life. So in other words, I can put it in this way, where it says, by grace you are saved. By grace you have been forgiven. By grace you have forgiveness. It may be the same page, maybe one before. Ephesians 1, in chapter before, first chapter, verse 7. In him, that is in Jesus, in Christ, we have redemption through his blood. What do we have? What do we have? Redemption. We have redemption through his blood. Even what? The forgiveness of sins according to what? According to the riches of his grace. Meaning that it wasn't on account of what you could do in your own power, in your own strength in walking in line or in accordance with any code. Why? By grace are you saved through faith. And that not what of yourself. It is what? It is the gift of God. It is what? Not of works. Lest what? Any man should boast. For by grace you have been saved. You 
You have the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of his grace. So all of that taken together, I'm saying the same process by which you were washed, sanctified, justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of God in becoming a new creation, entrenched in that whole process, is forgiveness given to you. Is forgiveness resulting in actuation, that is, in actuality. What do I mean by that? Because that once and for all sacrifice of Jesus is made for who? The whole world. And it remains that to be saved, for an unbeliever to be saved, he must express faith, he must believe in Jesus Christ on the basis of the death, his death and resurrection. Forgiveness is available to the whole world, but understand that the whole world is not saved. I say that again. Forgiveness is available to the whole world, but the whole world is not saved. And we must be careful because in the culture, in the world, even in the church, not this church, in the church of Jesus, there are many who preach that. Well, all are either saved or all are going to be saved and it doesn't really matter how one lives or what one does or what one believes. We are all God's children. Everyone's going to be saved. Everyone's been forgiven. Everyone's been forgiven. So live anyhow. Be a Lord unto yourself and do all sorts of things in the culture. I'll get to that at some, some point. But no, it takes faith. It takes believing it takes coming into Christ. All right, let's read one more. Pastor, what process are you talking about? Titus. Titus in chapter 3. Titus in chapter 3. From verse 4. Titus, in chapter 3, 4 to 7. Forgiven. A closer look at forgiveness. But when the kindness and love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness, we see that, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us through the washing of regeneration and renewal or renewing of the Holy Spirit. That speaks of rebirth. That speaks of being born again. That speaks of being born from above. That speaks of being born of the Spirit. That speaks of being born of God. Okay. The washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit, or yeah, the renewing, renewal carried out by the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit is instrumental in the aspect as it concerns recreation or rebirth. It's by the Holy Spirit you were washed. It's by the Holy Spirit you were sanctified. It's by the Holy Spirit you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus. And it's, as Paul put it, it's by the Spirit of God. whom he poured out on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior. So God did not leave himself without a witness. There's a seal on the inside of you. There's a seal upon you. There's a seal within you that simply reads, forgiven. Verse 7 that having been justified by his grace, we should become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. That having been justified, that having been justified, what does that word mean? What does the word justified, what does it mean? Anyone? Just as if you never sinned, 
Anyone else? Made righteous. Yes, yeah, from the Greek, from the originals. Made righteous, just as if you never sinned. One more. Declared innocent. All of those taken together, before you can get to those, that point, before you can say that, justified, oh, made righteous, uh, um, just as if you never sinned, or acquitted, or the picture of an acquittal, there's something that makes that possible. There's something that happens. You were forgiven. If there was a term, if there was a guilty verdict, and there was something you had to pay. In being released from that, in being acquitted, in being say, oh, go, walk free. Forgiveness. Forgiveness is essential in that. And forgiveness is to be had only in Christ Jesus by faith in him. Understanding this. Getting this. Appreciating this. It means it's a possession also. In whom we have redemption through his blood. You have the forgiveness of sins. You've been called into that because of your relationship now with Abba. It's a possession. It's a position. I'll put it another way. You are the forgiven. That you are saved. That's it. He forgave you of some trespasses. From what we read earlier, he forgave you of a few trespasses. He forgave you all trespasses. You have obtained forgiveness uh, and are the forgiven. It's key, it's profitable to understand this. Now, it is possible, I'll, I'll say this right now, in the next week and weeks, because I know that questions invariably that arise from this, we're looking at all such questions, some of those, well, don't let me say all, because y'all may then have to be here till about 9 p.m. on each Sunday hereafter, but we'll look at some of those, <laughs> yeah, we'll look at pertinent questions that result. But if I'm forgiven, how about this? How about that? Well, we're going to look at those and we're going to examine that, all of that, from God's Word. From God's Word. Get His heart. I want to set, in setting this platform, I want to also give this to you, because we're going to look at a portion in the Gospels, something that Jesus said in relation to forgiveness. And I want, I want to give this to you. As you read your Bible, as you study God's Word, as you are intentional in being in God's Word, always approach God's Word with a good idea of the covenant in view or the testament in view. Where am I? Am I in the Old Testament or am I in the New Testament? Okay? In the Old Testament, very quickly, you can say, attribute that and attach that to an old covenant. In the New Testament, we can say the same also in the main, for the most part. But as you read in the New Testament, concerning four the first four books, we have to keep in mind, by way of rightly dividing God's Word, we all, as students of God's Word, as disciples of Jesus, we always have to keep in mind what the record and the Word, what's being reported, we have to have in mind. Beyond, oh, this New Testament, ask yourself, what covenant is in operation here? What covenant is in operation? 
And so let me pose one to you as we close out today. When Jesus Christ walked the face of the earth, remember I'm talking about the record and the report, what we read, okay? When we read the synoptics, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and when we read John. When Jesus, because it's important, because when Jesus walked the face of the earth, what covenant was in operation? The old covenant was in operation. The terms are important, and we'll get into more of that. But saints, family, in understanding forgiveness, in walking freely in the fullness of what forgiveness brings and gives to your heart, in walking free as a child of God, it's important to be able to rightly divide his word and to know and you're not just reading. You're not just doing a check mark on a Bible thing for Bible in a year. Just to be able to say, yes, I covered it. Yes, I did it. But you want to hear him have his heart in what's written and given for you. It's an old covenant when he walked. Up until the point when he, what? Where he died. Where he died. You know what I feel like? I feel I ought not to let you go without looking at this and giving you a temple, giving you a, a base from scripture in this regard. It's important that you see it so that you don't say, oh, Pastor Shane was just saying some things here and Holy Spirit. We're going to read it real quick. Hebrews 9. Hebrews 9. Let's turn there real quick. Hebrews 9. And I just give this as a takeaway. Understanding the covenant, appreciating the covenants, being able as a disciple of Jesus to be able to distinguish between the covenants. What operated under this covenant? What, is, what's, what operates under the new? To be able to tell so that you walk free, walk in power, walk in victory, walk in authority. Hebrews 9, 16, 17. For where there is a testament, there must also of necessity be what? Be the death of the testator, for a testament is in force after men are what? Dead. Since it has no power at all while the testator lives. I like New American Standard. But where there's a covenant, there must of necessity be the death of the one who made it. This is the blood. This, is, this cup is the New Testament, my blood. As often as you drink this, do it in remembrance of me. That was an aside. For a covenant is valid only when people are dead. For it is never in force while the one who made it lives. Understanding this, and there's more, and we'll continue next time. Would you rise? Under the new covenant, it says, forgive because you have been forgiven. And there's a lot to that. But first, it's appreciating, understanding the weight, the full weight, reality and truth that you have been forgiven. Do you know? Do you recognize that? Not allowing the enemy to hold one over you as it concerns condemnation, as it concerns guilt, as it concerns shame, and so many other things that he tries to foment, bring into operation in your life. Father, thank you for the forgiveness that we have in you. Lord, we could not do this in our power, in our strength, well, Lord, you did. Thank you for giving your son Jesus. Paying the price in full on the cross so that we could have forgiveness of sins. Thank you, Lord. That our heartstrings turn to you. 
live and walk in freely in the forgiveness that we have. And that we in turn are able to extend that in forgiving others. Walking in love, walking in your light and in accordance with your will. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, if there be any heart that is under condemnation, that the revelation, reality, and light, that there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ, is clear, distinct, ringing in our hearts, in assurance, and great confidence in relationship with you. Thank you, Jesus. It is for freedom that you set us free to walk and live worthy of your call as your children in this life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. We'll continue next time. Hallelujah.